Welcome to the Porn Reboot Podcast, where you get practical tips to gaining control over your porn or sex addiction. We help ambitious men end their out of control sexual behavior with pornography, sex, and masturbation so that you can maximize your life, perform at your potential, and remain in control in the driver's seat, which is where you have to be in order to gain or maintain the success you want in life. I'm your host, JK Amazie, certified sex and porn addiction recovery coach. Welcome to the episode. Brothers, today we're going to be talking about how to fix your erectile dysfunction for good. And quite honestly, this topic is going to be broken down in a few parts just due to the sheer scope of everything which I have to cover. The episodes will not be consecutive, but it's going to be in about three different parts. Today, I'm going to focus mainly on some of the mental causes some of the physical causes of your erectile dysfunction. And I'm also going to be relating it to porn-induced erectile dysfunction. The first thing that I want to share is that if you're struggling with porn-induced erectile dysfunction, which simply means that you have viewed pornography compulsively to the point that you cannot get a natural erection, you need to view something, you need to view pornography, you need to imagine a scene from pornography, you need to have pornographic fantasies in your head in order to be able to have or maintain an erection. In some cases, you cannot have one at all. This is porn-induced erectile dysfunction. And if you were to test for it, the test is very simple. You try to masturbate with pornography and you try to masturbate without pornography. If without pornography, you're unable to get an erection, but with pornography, you're able to get one, then you probably are dealing with some level of porn-induced erectile dysfunction. Important to know. What is even more important, in my opinion, is that over time, and this is why it's so important to get help for your out-of-control sexual behavior, ASAP, is that over time, you can also end up dealing with just regular old erectile dysfunction, which is complex in and of itself. And when you put in the time investments, the energy investments, the financial investment in some cases to end your behavior with pornography in the hopes that you'll be able to get natural erection again, but find out that you still have erectile dysfunction, that can be very disheartening. So it's so important to have an education, so to speak, on erectile dysfunction. And what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today, this is not stuff that you're going to find in academic journals. This is not stuff that you're going to find on people's blogs. This is literally from almost 10 years of experience working with different men and also from my personal experience of dealing with porn-induced erectile dysfunction. So I suggest you take notes (laughs) wherever necessary. The first thing I want to share is that your erection is dependent on five things. The first is healthy testosterone levels. So any man who joins our implementation program, our intensive program, and struggles with porn-induced erectile dysfunction, one of the first things I recommend is getting what's called a hormone panel. So you want to get all your hormone levels tested, especially your male hormones. And when it comes to testosterone, you want to find out both the free and total testosterone level. There are a lot of men who have low testosterone levels, and the symptoms of low testosterone actually correspond with the symptoms of porn addiction. And there are a lot of men that we've turned away from our program because they actually didn't have an addiction to pornography. They were just medicating low testosterone symptoms and experiencing low testosterone symptoms and started thinking that they had a porn addiction when that really wasn't the case. So your erection is dependent on having healthy testosterone levels. Please do not conflate this with, oh, but I'm able to have an erection when I'm viewing pornography. Most men are because it is hyper arousal and everything you're watching is absolutely unrealistic, okay? That's the first thing. The second is most men who struggle with porn-induced erectile dysfunction have what I call an imbalance of the PC muscle. And the reason why is because you have been using your penis and your PC muscle in an unnatural way, which means you've been viewing pornography, edging, masturbating more than you are actually having sex. And as a result of that, the repeated flexing of that muscle in a very specific way causes you to overdevelop some muscles and you allow other muscles to atrophy. Now, if you were having sex on a regular basis, this 
probably wouldn't be an issue because you would develop your muscles in a natural, healthy way. So there are some things that can be done to fix that imbalance of the pelvic floor. The third thing is having and being in the right mental state. A lot of guys just worry a little bit too much. They're thinking about too many things. There's just a lot going on in their head and they're just not in the right mental states to stimulate the release of the neurochemicals, which actually lead to an erection. The third is nitric oxide production. Now, nitric oxide is an important component of erections because it is what causes your penile tissue to relax. And I'll be talking about this in a little bit. Your penile tissue needs to relax in order for there to be adequate blood flow, which is essential to an erection. Again, I'll speak about this in a little bit. And the final thing is blood flow. So there are certain muscles which need to be relaxed in order for there to be adequate blood flow. And this leads to a very important point about erections. A lot of men who view pornography and who view it compulsively you often view pornography when you are stressed or when you're lonely, usually when you are not in a state of relaxation. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure there's sometimes that you do view pornography and masturbate like when you're in a relaxed state, like when you're about to go to bed. But again, it is also connected to a little bit of stress because you believe that you need to masturbate in order to go to bed. And thus, it could still generate stress if you don't masturbate. However, an erection doesn't have anything to do with stress. Now, pornography has a lot to do with stress because you medicate via that, but an erection is a relaxation response. I'll say it again. An erection is actually a relaxation response, which means that in order for you to have consistent erections, you need to learn how to be in a state of relaxation, which means high cortisol levels, always being stressed and on edge, always being angry is not conducive to having an erection. I know that there's some of you listening to this who use the little yellow pill or a blue pill, that's Cialis or Viagra or whatever else is out there these days. And you might think it solves the problem, but it's a temporary solution. As most of you who have been using it have realized it has become a crutch because you're going to need increasing amounts of it in order to maintain your erection. So these pills, for those of you who are uninitiated, do just two things. They help you get erections quicker and they help you keep them longer, but they won't help you in certain situations. If you have low testosterone levels, the pills are not gonna help. If you do not have a strong PC muscle, then you're not going to get the full impact of these medications. And if you're not in the right mental state, well, it's just not gonna work at all. You're just popping stuff that is gonna lower your blood pressure and does nothing for you. So with that being said, I just, I needed to get the whole pill thing out of the way because there's some guys who really believe in them but don't know how they work. Let's talk about the mental causes and the physical causes of erectile dysfunction. Again, just a quick reminder, I'm talking about this in case you might be dealing with erectile dysfunction under your porn-induced erectile dysfunction, in case it is also another underlying issue. The first thing is, some of you guys are familiar with our flight or fight response as human beings. And that simply means that it's it's a response that has been developed, we've evolved to, to have to protect us, to help us survive if we're being hunted, to protect ourselves. However, it's important to note that in the hierarchy of human needs, our body ranks survival higher than sex. So that means that if you are, your nervous system is ever in a state of fight or flight, if you're freaked out over anything, then you're not going to have an erection. So let's say that you haven't had sex for a while and you've been going through the reboot process and you feel you're ready to be intimate with somebody. You're on a date, everything is going well. It seems that sex is imminent and then you start freaking out. It's just, oh my God, I haven't had sex for so long. The last time that I had sex with somebody, it just didn't work out and she laughed at me and my dick wasn't working and it looked so tiny and so on and so forth. Been there, it sucks, I get it. But if you get into that fight or flight mode, your nervous system is not going to be in a state that supports arousal. So that's not gonna happen. 
That's one of the first mental causes. The second one is just not having any sexual arousal. And this is, again, sometimes it's due to your porn viewing, which is what you see on these screens is not the same as what you will find in real life. And so when a real life woman is in front of you, there are smells, the touch is different from what you had imagined. A thousand times you viewed pornography, her vagina looks different, everything looks different. It's not perfect and airbrushed the way it is in pornography. So I'll just give you the solution to that one. The solution to that is to start learning, especially when you're rebooting, to find something attractive about any woman that you're sexually intimate with. Like literally, it could be a part of her body, it could be a sound she makes, whatever it is, find something attractive and kind of zoom in on that mentally to help you with your arousal. I'll probably talk about this in one of the other episodes, but just a quick tip for you. And another of the major mental causes is not being present. So if you are freaking out and you're thinking of different things, you're thinking of the next move you're going to pull sexually, you're thinking about your penis, you're worried about porn-induced erectile dysfunction, you're worried about how you smell, or you're worried about the size of your penis, is she going to think it's too small? If you're not present in the moment and you keep, or you, oh my God, I can't believe I'm having sex right now, it's been so long, whatever the case may be, again, it impacts your nervous system, you're not present, you're not going to be able to have or maintain an erection. So those are a few of the major mental causes. Now, there are more, and I will definitely be diving into them in detail in some of the next episodes, but I wanted to talk about the physical causes. The first one, as I mentioned earlier, is having low testosterone levels. This does lead to a reduction in your sex drive. And gentlemen, when you view pornography and you view it compulsively, it is very challenging early on in your reboot to tell the difference between your sex drive and your addiction to pornography. Even if you're a very smart man and you know like, yeah, my sex drive is different from my urge to view pornography, we just have this natural tendency, it's an ego thing to just go like, I'm a man with a high sex drive, but I've never been off pornography and masturbation for up to three months. And you just assume that because it feels good. But the truth is that without porn or masturbation, you might have a very low sex drive. So important to get your testosterone levels checked, especially when you've stayed off porn for a little bit, because chronic masturbation and chronic porn viewing in conjunction with masturbation can actually temporarily lower your testosterone levels. So if you get your testosterone level when you're in the middle of a porn binge that week, probably not the best time to get an accurate reading. We'll go more into more detail on this, but for now, I will say that three of the things that you can do to fix your low testosterone levels are changing your diet, and I will literally be sharing my high testosterone diet with you guys, supplementation, which I'll be talking about as well, and certain exercises that you can do. The next physical cause, again, I spoke about it at the beginning of this episode, is having a weak pelvic floor. As I mentioned earlier, this is responsible for your erections, for ejaculation. It's also responsible for the sensation of orgasm. And men who have a great control of their PC muscle, of their pelvic floor, are capable of multiple orgasms. This is something that I've experienced before, and I occasionally experience it when I have the discipline to continue with the exercises called Kegels. Again, they might be pronounced Kegels. I have never bothered to get the appropriate pronunciation. Kegels or Kegels, K-E-G-E-L-S, look it up. That is pretty much the only solution to a weak pelvic floor or an imbalanced pelvic floor. Another cause is not having enough nitric oxide production. Now, nitric oxide, again, it's responsible for the relaxation of penile muscle tissue. So it just helps your blood vessels relax. If it's too tight, then your blood vessels are going to tighten up and there's not going to be enough blood flow. So even if you do have an erection, you're going to have weak erections. And so one of the things that some of those little pills do is that the blue or the yellow is that they increase nitric oxide production in your body, 
which then helps your penile tissue to relax. But there are also healthier ways of getting this in your diet via supplementation, and I'll be talking about that as well. The final physical cause I want to talk about is one that is really not emphasized enough, and that is having poor cardio. Literally, you can experience a buildup of plaque in the arteries that are connected to your penile tissue. So yes, there are two main arteries that are in your penile region. So we have one that's called the penile artery, and there's another one which is called the, I believe it's called the scrotal artery, which breaks down into a couple of other arteries. I believe the bulbo-utheral artery and the cavernosal artery, if my memory serves me right. Either way, you have got a major artery in your penis, and there can be a buildup of plaque in that artery. Literally, you can have the equivalent of a heart attack off the penis from a buildup of plaque. And this comes from having a terrible diet and poor cardio. So exercise is very important to your penile health. And I know a lot of doctors say this, urologists say this, but they just never explain the reason why. That is the reason why. So, you know, poor diet, living a very sedentary lifestyle, smoking a lot, drinking a lot of alcohol. These are some of the things that contribute to that buildup of arterial plaque in your penis. So that's so important. And I fortunately to just a lot of guys who think they are fit just because they look in the mirror and they're skinny fat and they're like, well, I'm not overweight and I go to the gym twice a week and, you know, I stretch and I'm, no, if your cardio is shit, then this is going to affect you negatively. Gentlemen, that is all the time I have for today. I hope that was a decent introduction into fixing erectile dysfunction. I know I gave you guys a little bit of a taste of some of the things to come. I will be delivering on these things. But in the meantime, as you wait for those specific podcast episodes, please feel free to ask more about it in the Porn Reboot private group on Facebook. If you're not on Facebook, that's fine. You can shoot me an email. It might take me a while to get back. We do receive hundreds of emails every week. But if you are on Facebook and you join the private group, the first thing to know is that it is private. So nobody in your friend's circle, no one on your friend's list is going to know that you joined the group. They're not going to know that you post. Don't worry about it. But a lot of guys listen to the podcast. They have discussions about it there. It's a great place to get an accountability partner. It is absolutely free. And I highly recommend that you join if you do not have any community to support you in dealing with this out of control behavior. So in the meantime, you can hop in there. You can tag me. You can ask questions. And I'll respond as soon as is convenient for me. In the meantime, thank you so much for listening. And I'll speak to you later on in the week. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Porn Reboot Podcast. I'll speak to you later on in the week. If you found this episode helpful, here are four ways I can help you with your out-of-control sexual behavior for free. The first way is to grab a free copy of my book, Confessions of a Porn Addict, Seven Secrets of Porn-Free Men at elevatedrecovery.org or visit the link in the description below this episode. The second way is if you're not sure where to start, but you'd like to learn more about my team and I, if you'd like to spend time with like-minded professionals and business owners who are controlling their behavior, then join our free and confidential group, the Porn Reboot Group on Facebook. There's a link to join in the description below this episode. The third way is if you need help right now because you have a burning issue, your behavior with pornography is hurting you mentally or emotionally, you're about to lose your relationship, you want to live up to your potential, be an authentic man and free yourself from shame, guilt and underachieving, then click on the link in the description below this episode that says free coaching call. And the fourth way is to leave us a five-star review if you enjoy this podcast so that we can reach more men who are struggling in silence and bring back the lessons we learn from coaching them to freedom. 